Hey guys, what's going on? Fred London here. You guys know what to do. As always, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Let's get into today's video. So we're starting off with Kai Havertz makes Chelsea shirt number a quest as German prepares for Premier League debut. And yep, obviously you can tell what that is. And it looks like uh, Kai Havertz has requested to take Fukai Tomori's number 20 shirt. Um, that's not actually true. It's the number 29 shirt that he wants. Havertz wore the number 29 shirt when he was at Bayer Leverkusen. And uh, there was speculation of what shirt he would take on his arrival at Chelsea. The number 10 shirt is available after Willian's departure from the club. So it looks like Pulisic is going to be wearing the number t uh, 22 will now wear the number 10 shirt according to the athletic uh simon johnson uh team of uh, team of uh, kai Havertz has asked for tomorrow's number 29 jersey there you go they actually got it right further down in the article um and then he was just quoted saying being told kai Havertz has asked to take tomorrow's number 29 shirt and uh, number on joining cfc he said on twitter it's his favorite number having worn it with Bayer leverkusen so it's nice he likes that number um it looks like that is going to be what he's wearing i've seen reports saying that tomorrow's fine with that um, and that aligns with another story that we've got heading into um, later on into this video. Um, but yeah, it looks like tomorrow is fine with that one. He's not too eager to keep that number 29 shirt. So there'll be no qualms. It looks like Kai Wurtz will be wearing number 29 for Chelsea next season. And Pulisic is most likely going to be wearing number 10. So then we have some news on Edouard Mendy. We know this is sort of the hottest transfer at the moment when it comes to all this Chelsea news. And we're seeing Ren's captain says Edouard Mendy deserves to join Chelsea. And we've got a little bit of added news on top of this, which is very exciting. But we'll get to that in a little second. Um, the Silver admits Ren player a reluctant to see uh, the Senegal international leave the club. He said, we are a little selfish. We don't want to lose Edouard Mendy, but it's part of football and the transfer market, he told Telefoot. He's a great goalkeeper who deserves what happens to him. Him. and then there's a bunch of other reports in that section but if we move on this has been reported um by a you know a Ren's, uh, source saying chelsea have agreed a 25 million pounds including bonuses fee to sign edward mendy from Ren. so it looks like this one is going to be happening um this source supposedly got a few other deals right um including ones specifically from uh, this club so it does look to be accurate um of course the fees and stuff like that you'll have different people reporting it all the time we've seen with kai Havertz how some people are reporting it's like 100 million euros and then there's other people reporting that in pounds it's um about 62 million up front will go up to about 71 million which is not 100 million euros so there's definitely conflicting reports um on the kai Havertz one the more reliable reporters have reported that it is 62 million and then about 9 million to take it up to about 71 somewhere about there um so that's what i'm going to go with but on the edward mendy situation it does look like 25 million included bonuses and it looks like we've got um edward mendy from rent and there's plenty of ways that you can like look at this of course it's a it's a stopgap signing he's one that, as i said before he'll do well for us for a season if kepper's not performing we bring this guy in he's very commanding of the area i think he's just going to do a lot better than kepper is capable of doing and i'm fine with it so he should be benching Kepa um, and then in maybe a year or two if we can look at maybe selling Kepa on for a decent fee that's when we can look at going to get Donnarumma and All Black or someone you know top tier so very excited for this one we might be seeing you know some real quick movement on this and we'll see an announcement over the next few days um, because it looks to have all been agreed which I'm very very happy with let me know what you guys think of this one So I said we had some Fikayo Tomori news and here we have it. Fikayo Tomori, Everton close in on Chelsea defender on season long loan. And there's a few other reports saying this. It basically looks like the 22 year old uh, was close to joining Rennes, but it's, um, is now in talks over a move to Everton following their failed attempt to bring in Gabriel Magalhaes, who joined Arsenal from Lille in a £27 million pound deal. Um, and then it goes on to talk about Everton and how they've uh, signed a few other people. Um, but basically, Tomori going to be going on to Everton, which I think is a really good move for him if you really sort of look into it will he start there possibly not but possibly will you know you never know what sort of deal we've arranged maybe we've arranged that he will be starting 30 games a season in the league or something like that and we've made that request to them um maybe we've just made it so that he'll be a squad player and that's also possible and he will get 
15 games across the season which is possibly more than he'd get at Chelsea now um, either way I'm fine with this one I think it's good experience for him to go to Everton and sort of you know take the path of Kurt Zuma who's obviously went to Everton for a few years and um, performed quite well out there Everton I think we're looking to buy him at one point but we were like nah bring him into the first team and now Kurt Zuma probably our best centre back I know we've just bought Thiago Silva but we haven't seen him play yet so let's just say Kurt Zuma is our best centre back um, and yeah this could be a really good move for tomorrow it's Premier League it's you know mid table there or thereabouts and with the signings that Everton have made they could be a real force this season if they can um, you know gel well and they get along as a squad I really do think this is a good move so I'm excited to keep an eye on Everton and see how Fikawa Tomori does over there but it does look like this is pretty much going to be the one there's a few other reports saying that this pretty much is going to happen so season long loan to, uh, for Tomori to Everton very happy with this one So then we have some news that Thiago Silva is en route to London. That is um, yesterday, as you guys are seeing this video. That is when he's been travelling to London. And then Simon Phillips goes on to say, I believe he could be available for Brighton. Yes, no quarantine coming from Italy. So it does look like he is available for Brighton because there's no you know, 14-day quarantine coming from there. So that should be all good. Um, and he's on his way to London. That's good because it means that he can meet up with a squad. Um, basically coming back with all of the international duty um, players of obviously people have been away you know England all, all the rest of the um, nationalities that we've got on our squad have been playing and he's coming back essentially to mix in with them and start our pre-season which is kind of weird you know we've had like the pre-season friendly against Brighton but then there was international fixtures and now we're going back to pre-season a little bit um, just to get training and get the squad gelling together so having Thiago Silva there is going to be very exciting because as I mentioned in the last video he's going to be key to being a sort of a leader on the on the coaching side on the playing side like on the training ground all that sort of stuff so it's good to see that he's getting there and he should be available to play play against Brighton whether he will I don't know maybe Frank will want to go with you know Rudiger Christensen or something like that because they're a little more experienced in this team don't get me wrong I'm not saying they're on Thiago Silva's level for experience in our team you know they know the players they know the system and all that sort of stuff so maybe we'll see them play but I definitely think I'd prefer to just throw Thiago Silva in there given that he recently played in a Champions League final I think he's probably on a higher level than Christensen and Rudiger Then we have news of someone who is most likely going to be leaving. And we talked about it a little bit in yesterday's video, but it's now been um, progressed. Mishu Batshuayi is set to sign a Chelsea contract extension and head out on loan to Crystal Palace. So we were seeing, you know, the talks of he yeah, had three clubs. I think it was like Newcastle, West Ham, Crystal Palace or something like that, maybe Leeds. Um, but it looks like now he is going to be signing a new contract and head out to Crystal Palace. That's been decided and I'm fine with that. Again, I think Mishu Batshuayi is just going to be someone that we send out on loan, as I mentioned this in yesterday's video. We send him out on loan and, you know, he goes to Crystal Palace, say he performs well. Maybe then they'll buy him off us for 15 million or something like that. And I did say, you know, I mentioned it with a few other players that if we send them out on loan, we're going to want them to sign contracts before they go because um, their contracts run out and then they'd be free at the end of it. So then Crystal Palace would just say, okay, we'll keep him. This applies to the Donnarumma situation as well. Some people were saying, we were offering, you know, the loan capper to them. They loaned on a rumor to us, and then we pay something at the end of it. But his contract runs out in a year, so that wouldn't have made sense. So I said the most likely thing would be the Donnarumma would get a new contract, a short one, and then he'd be allowed to loan back to us so that we could get, um, so that they could get a fee for him at the end of it. And that's essentially what's happening with Batshuayi. We're sending him out on loan, and then when he comes back to us, we're still able to get a fee for him. So that's good. Uh, will he do well at Crystal Palace? Possibly. He did all right against uh, in the Belgium game um, last night. So, yeah, very possible he will um, do okay at Crystal Palace. He got a couple of goals. If he bangs it there, then maybe he will be back to be a backup at Chelsea, but I think most likely will be sold.
And then just a quick update on N'Golo Kante. Uh, it looks like, you know, I feel like we knew this situation mostly, but there were still reports coming out. Um, but it says N'Golo Kante is happy at Chelsea and will not be leaving the club this window. So that's good news to see, you know, he's happy at Chelsea. That does, it doesn't surprise me as much. I didn't ever think he was unhappy at Chelsea. But there were talks of, is he going to go for like 80 million? Chelsea have said if anyone wants him, it's 80 million. And there are a few clubs maybe sniffing about, according to the reports, but doesn't look like it's happening. He'll be not, he will not be leaving the club this window which is very good um, like I've said probably our only world class player as it stands and it's good to have him at the club it looks like as well Chelsea's youth teams have been playing a 4-2-3-1 formation um, over the past few days so normally how it works with a football club is your youth teams emulate the tactics that you're using in the first team so that when they come up to the first team they understand how it is and it looks like um, they've been playing in a 4-2-3-1, so it does look like that's what the first team is going to be playing. So what you'll probably see is the you know back four, Thiago Silva, Reese James, Aspi, like whoever's going to be in there, and then Kante, Kovacic in the double pivot with Kai Havertz at a cam, two wingers and the striker. That does look like what we're going to be doing. Of course, then Mason Mount can fit in the double pivot. He can fit in the cam. He can play on the wing, but probably won't. Um, and it does look like that'll probably be our preferred starting lineup. Of course, Kovacic is suspended for the first game, um, so he won't be playing there. So maybe we'll be seeing Kante and Jorginho in the double pivot. But we will definitely get a good idea of what we're doing for the rest of the season once we've um, played that first game against Brighton. Because I think we're going to stick with a either a 4-2-3-1 or a 4-3-3 through most of the season and then adjust for the bigger games. So that is going to be the end of the video, guys. So if you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will catch you on the next one. Goodbye.